Hi, my name is Deidre, and I am here to teach an Iyengar class today that is preparing us for Padmasana, Lotus Pose. So Lindsay and Nalia are joining me today, and we will go through this class. Um, let's start in Sukhasana. So we're all there already, but we've been here a minute, so we can change the cross of our legs. With that new cross, take your hands forward, walk your legs back, and as the legs go back, stretch your fingers and your arms forward. So the arms pull the sides of the body forward. And then with that length, let the head and neck release. Allow the weight of the legs to release downwards towards the floor. Feel how the weight of the upper body even helps the legs settle. And then keeping the head and neck quiet, slowly walk your hands back. Roll the shoulders back, recover with an open chest, and then we'll do to the other side. So change the cross of the legs again. And with that new cross, take your hands forward again, walk the legs back, stretch your fingers and your arms forward to extend the sides. And with that length now, let the head and neck go down. Feel again the weight of the upper body resting on the legs. So just that weight helps the inner thighs spread to the inner knees. Let yourself settle here. And then keeping the head and neck quiet, walk your hands back again. Slowly roll the shoulders back to open the chest. And we'll stretch the legs out. You can spread your toes, press your thighs and your knees down here to open up the backs of the legs. And then we'll come up to stand. So we'll start standing with the feet and the legs together. With the feet and legs together, shift your weight back into your heels and then interlock your fingers in front of you like this. With that interlock, take the palms forward and again, press the thighs back. From here, as you press your heels, swing your arms up and over your head. With an inhalation, lift your hands to lift your wrist. Lift your hands to straighten the elbows. Lift your hands to pull the arms and the sides of the body up. And then exhale, release. Turn the palms to face you and change the interlock of the fingers. With that new interlock, turn the palms forward. Again, take the legs back so your weight shifts to your heels. Inhale, press the heels and swing the arms up. Lift your hands to lift your arms. Lift your arms to lengthen the sides. So get that long line of extension from the hips all the way to the wrist. Exhale and release. From here, we'll take the fingers behind your back. So as you interlock the fingers behind your back, the heels of the hands can be a little apart. Take the legs back, press your feet, and with an inhalation, raise the sides up. With that lift in the sides, roll the upper arm bone back. So that big hump of the shoulder, we move back behind the level of the chest. Feel there how the sides of the chest move forward and the top chest can lift up. As you press your heels down, stretch the arms back and down, look up and lift the top chest to the ceiling. And then exhale and relax a little, change the interlock of the fingers. With that new interlock, take the legs back, press your feet, raise the sides up. With that lift in the sides, roll the upper arm bones back. So with the thighs back, upper arms back, press into the heels, stretch the arms back and down, as we lift the top chest. And then exhale and release. So we'll come back into Tadasana. Again, bring your weight to your heels. Lift and spread your toes to comb the muscles in the legs up. And with that firmness in the legs, press your heels, raise the sides up. And just like we did in the, the last position when we had the hands behind the back, see can you take that hump of the shoulder back behind the level of the chest so that the sides of the chest move forward and we start to connect the upper back into the body to support now the lift in the sides and lift in the chest. Press your feet, spread and extend the fingers as you bring the eyes to eye level and the top chest can spread and open there. And then exhale and release. So we will take a look at some of the standing poses, the lateral standing poses. And we hear often that these poses prepare for lotus pose. <laughs> and, and it doesn't always feel that way because the, <laughs> that, that the hip opening action isn't so, so clear sometimes when we practice the standing poses. 
So watch, this is how we will make that connection. So if you are jumping apart, and you can watch first. If you are jumping apart, you can step or jump. Um, if not, feel free to absolutely step. I'm going to take my hands here to the tops of my thighs. And with my hands to the tops of the thighs, I turn my back foot in. My whole front leg will turn out. So what you can see here, the, my inner thigh is rolling down towards the floor a little bit. It's as if the inner thigh is trying to see what the back of the thigh is doing. And then from this angle, the front of my thigh is rolling towards the inner thigh, outer thigh rolling towards the inner thigh. But we know that when we stand in Tadasana, the center of the leg is in a line, the outer leg is in a line, back of the leg is in a line. So the way that we'll use our hand today, I'm bringing my hand to the top of my thigh like this, and I have my index finger right on that inner thigh. So I'm using my hand to help roll the inner thigh to the top of the thigh. And then with my thumb on that outer thigh, I'm using the hand to roll that outer thigh down. So when that happens, when I get this external rotation in the front leg, now this leg is back into Tadasana, where the center thigh, knee, shin and ankle in the line, inner leg, outer leg in the line. That turning at the top of the thigh, it's, it, it, it almost reminds me of kind of unscrewing a jar or taking the bottle cap off of a, 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 a soda or something. But it's, it's helping us create that freedom and space in the hip so that when we come into a pose like triangle pose, we're able to bend in the hip rather than having to bend in the waist if we're not getting that turning in the leg or maybe going forward and the hip is out. So again, we'll use our hand to turn, 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 turn until we're seeing that leg in the line. And then we can bend into the hip to come into the pose. So we'll do that together. When you're ready, stand in the front of your mat, or sorry, center of your mat. Raise your hands to the center of your chest. Step or jump the feet apart. With the feet wide, take your hands to the tops of your thighs, not so much on the waist, down a little bit at the top of the leg, and then turn your left toes in just slightly. And from where that right hand is, turn the whole right leg out. That's it. Now, can you turn the top of the, so, so look at your front foot and see if the toes are pointing straight ahead towards that side of the mat. So here, turn your toes out a little bit and the back foot in a little bit more. And then even walk your back foot more to the back. That's it. And use your top hand at the top of the thigh now to turn the front of the leg until you see the inner thigh turning to the outer thigh. That's it. See the center thigh, center knee, center shin and ankle in the line. Now with that rotation in the front leg, stretch your arms wide. That's it, and then with that stretch in the arms, inhale into the top chest, and with an exhalation, come into the pose. Take your bottom hand onto your shin, and then your top hand to your hip. That's it, lift your toes here. As you lift your toes, tighten the knees and the thighs, so you draw the muscles in the legs up, and then with that firmness, press the heels, pull the thighs up to the hips, that's it. To come out of this pose, press your back foot, stretch the top arm, Come on up. Turn your toes forward. Take your hands to the tops of your thighs again. With the hands at the tops of the thighs, roll the shoulders back. That's it, and recover with an open chest. Take a look at your feet. See that the outer edge of your foot is parallel to the edge of the mat. So uh, if we stand, I'm being a little bit dramatic. <laughs> but when the toes turn out, the back of the leg will close, the buttock will grip. And that will put this kind of pressure in the lower back, and then the, the chest sinks. So when I'm able to spread the heels out, I'm actually creating this length for the back of the leg, and now that stretch in the legs helps to lengthen the spine. So here, we'll go to the other side. Turn the right foot in slightly, and right where your left hand is at the top of the thigh, turn the left leg out. So first, look at your left foot. See that your toes point straight ahead towards that side of the mat. And then again, with your left hand at the top of the thigh, turn the left leg so your index finger at the inner thigh and is lifting the inner thigh towards the front of the thigh and then you turn the front of the thigh towards the outer thigh and that thumb on the outer hip there use the thumb to help get that outer hip to roll down from here stretch the arms wide inhale into the top chest and then exhale bend to the side with your left hand on your shin 
and then the right arm straight up. That's it. So here, as you lift your toes, tighten the knees and the thighs, press the heels and comb the muscles in the legs up. With that stretch in the legs, pull the arms apart to spread and open across your chest. That's it. And to come up now, press your back foot, stretch the top arm and come on up. Turn your toes forward and then step or jump the feet together. So we'll, we'll take a look again at how we're working to externally rotate the front leg. The, in the lateral standing poses, triangle pose, warrior two, side angle pose, the front leg is the priority. And the front leg is the priority because the front leg is searching for freedom. We have to find freedom first before we bring in the stability. So if, for example, I was stretching the back leg and the back leg is doing an awesome job at that, then I would struggle to turn this front leg up. So to help with this rotation that we're working to get in the front leg, I'm going to relax the back leg. So when I turn my front leg and I see, oh, the center of my leg is almost in the line, but not quite, watch my back leg gets out of the way, it rolls in a little. And when that back leg gets out of the way, see there how I'm able to turn that front leg more. So when the back leg is getting out of the way, it doesn't mean that the thigh puffs forward. It just means that the leg may turn in, and for everyone, the leg is gonna have to turn in a little. It, how much, it depends upon how much space we need to, to organize the front leg. So we'll do that again with the hand at the top of the thigh. We'll rotate the leg, seeing that the back leg can get out of the way so that we're, again, able to get that deeper bend in the hip. Let's do that together. So uh, bend your legs like this. Right where you're bending your leg at the top of the thigh, have your hands there. So again, not so much on the waist or the hips, but lower at the top of the thigh. From here, step or jump the feet wide apart. That's it, and then with the legs wide, turn your left toes in slightly. That's it, now turn the whole right leg out. So look at your right foot, see that the toes point straight ahead towards the front of the mat. Even look at your right knee, look at the center of the thigh. You may see, even though we turn the leg out, that the front of the thigh is kind of rolling towards the big toe side of the foot. So turn the right leg, use your right hand to turn the inner thigh to the outer thigh, and look at the back leg, that's it. As you're turning the right leg, let the back leg roll in a little bit more. That's it, and now I'm gonna add something kinda new. <laughs> stretch your arms wide. As you stretch your arms, reach your right arm like your right arm is trying to go past your foot, and while your arm is trying to go past your foot, can you get that outer right hip to roll back towards the back foot? From here, take your right hand to your shin, and then the left arm straight up. That's it, lift your toes to tighten the knees and the thighs. With that firmness, see, can you release even more here? That's it. So with this rotation in the leg, there you go, you can lengthen from here to there. Keep your hand on your shin. That's it, just, just getting longer. Press the back foot, stretch your top arm, inhale, come on up. Turn your toes forward, take your hands to the tops of the thighs again, Roll the shoulders back and recover with an open chest. Deeper breaths here, deeper inhalation, deeper exhalation. Turn your right toes in slightly. From where your left hand is, turn the left leg out. Use your left hand to turn the top of the thigh. So again, that you're seeing the center thigh, center knee, center shin and ankle in the line. As you rotate the legs, look at your leg and see if the center leg is, is there. If it's not there, let go of the back leg a little. So that's it, so the back leg will roll in, and then can you turn the front leg even more? That's it, even more turn here. And then stretch the arms wide. As you stretch your arms wide, reach your left arm past your foot. And as your arm goes past your foot, the outer left hip slides away from the waist. That's it, from here, take your left hand to your shin, and then the right arm straight up. There you go. With that outer left hip releasing away from the waist, press your feet, Stretch the arms to open across your chest. That's it, and now to come up, press your back foot, stretch your arm, pull yourself up. Turn your toes forward, and then step or jump the feet together. That's it, and roll the shoulders back to recover with an open chest. So we'll work with this again, now that we have this understanding of the front leg searching for freedom, the back leg making space for the front leg to do that. We'll do that again, and then stretch the arms wide. This time, we'll bend 
the front leg at the ankle, the knee, and this release in the hip, it's just that. It's a release. I'm letting go now to create that space. So these lateral standing poses, the way that they're opening the hips for the deeper seated hip opening poses, it's just creating space. So this isn't necessarily where you're gonna feel, oh, this is an intense stretch. It's just gonna feel like space. And so we're getting that by how we bend the ankle, the knee, and then releasing in that front hip. Let's do that. So have your hands again at the tops of the thighs. Inhale and go wide apart. Turn your left toe, actually separate your feet a little wider than we did for triangle pose. Turn your left toes in slightly. Use your right hand to turn the right leg out. So again, looking at your right foot, we're seeing first that the, the toes are facing that way. Now look at the center of the leg and we'll, we're kind of seeing that the leg isn't quite aligned yet. So use your right hand to turn the top of the thigh until you're seeing the center thigh, center knee, center shin and ankle in the line. So here, let this thigh come back. That's it, now turn here. That's it. With that rotation in the front leg, stretch your arms wide. That's it, and now keeping the stretch in the arms, inhale into the top chest, exhale and bend. Bend in the ankle, bend the front leg. Ankle, knee, that's it. Now can you release in that right hip so the thigh goes down. Inhale to lift the chest, exhale, sit a little lower. That's it. And now press your back foot, stretch your top arm, come on up. Turn the toes forward, hands at the tops of the thighs again. Roll the shoulders back, recover with an open chest. That's it, and we'll go to the other side. Turn the right toes in slightly. Turn the whole left leg out. That's it, and so see, can you feel if that, front, if that back thigh, yes, it's getting out of the way, but remember the thigh isn't forward. So everyone, take your right hand to the front of your right thigh like this, push the thigh back. That's it, feel your weight move into the back heel when you do that. Now with the right thigh back, use your left hand to turn the top of the thigh. That's it, feel the freedom that it's getting now. So the back leg is also getting space when we're moving the thigh back. Now as you turn the front leg, stretch the arms wide. That's it, inhale into the top chest, exhale and bend the front leg. Uh, in warrior two, arms straight up. That's it, inhale, lengthen. Exhale and bend again. There you go. And then press your back foot, stretch your arm, come on up. Turn your toes forward, step or jump the feet together. So what we're seeing now is when we bend the front leg in warrior pose too, and in the way that we're working, we're working to create this space in the hip, right? I think what, what, what we're finding is we bend and we have so much freedom in the hip now <laughs> that see how my knee is over my toe. So this is where we need to take a little more space. So I'll walk my back foot back a little. So with this longer distance between my feet, when I go to bend, I'm bending the ankle, bending the knee, releasing in the hip, but the knee is right over the ankle. And I'm able to get that deeper bend to come into the hip. So we're, we're giving space now uh, by separating the feet a little wider to just account for all this freedom we're creating in the hips. <laughs> Take your hands to the tops of your thighs. Inhale, go wide apart. That's it, separate your feet a little wider. Turn your left toes in slightly. Turn the whole right leg out. So feel again if that back thigh is puffed forward. Take your left hand to the top of the thigh, move the thigh back. And with that leg back, use your right hand now to rotate the right leg from inside to out. That's it. And the back leg can still turn in a little to make space for the front leg. From here, stretch your arms. Inhale into the top chest. Exhale and bend the front leg. That's it. Bend in the ankle. That's it. Bend in the knee. Release in the hip so the thigh goes down. Awesome, everyone. And then press your back foot. Stretch your arm. Come on up. Turn your toes forward. Hands to the tops of the thighs again. Second side, now turn the right toes in slightly. Turn the whole left leg out. Use your left hand to turn the left leg from inside to out. That's it, feel if the right thigh puffs forward, use your right hand to move the right thigh back. And then with that thigh back, turn the front leg even more there. There you go, from here, stretch your arms. Inhale into the top chest. Exhale and bend the front leg. Bend in the ankle, that's it. Bend in the knee, release in the hip so the thigh goes down. Inhale, stretch the sides, stretch the arms. Exhale, can you sit a little lower? That's it. Press your back foot, stretch your top arm, come on up. Turn your toes forward. 
step or jump the feet together. So let's set up our blocks this way. So the blocks are at the back of the mat. And we're using the blocks just to give ourselves a little space um, for side angle pose. If you don't need the blocks, you can do without the blocks. For this pose, we're coming in the same way that we just did in Warrior Two. We're bending the front leg and then bending to the side. The nice thing about this pose, as I press my bottom hand to stretch that arm, this bottom arm is it's almost like an extra leg. It's, it's supporting me here. So now, if I'm holding here in the hip, which we tend to do, I can release in the hip. So it's, it's giving me an extra support so I can let go any gripping here to create space. Then we'll roll the top shoulder back and swing that arm over the ear. So we'll go through side angle pose the same. Take your hands to the tops of the thighs again. Inhale, go wide apart. Separate the feet wide like we did for warrior pose two. Turn the left toes in slightly. Turn the whole right leg out. Feel again if that back thigh puffs forward. You can use your left hand to move the thigh back. Turn the right leg from inside to out. Feel, you feel how the hand again helps the top of the thigh revolve. From here, stretch your arms. Inhale into the top chest. Exhale and bend the front leg. With that bend, come to the side. Take your right hand either to the floor or to the brick. Left hand can come to your hip. Top hand can come to your hip. As you press that right hand to stretch the arm, can you exhale and release in the hip so the thigh goes down? That's it. With that deeper bend now in the front leg, roll the left shoulder back, swing that left arm over your ear. Keeping that deeper bend in the front leg, press your back foot, stretch your top arm, and with the stretch in the back leg and top arm, pull yourself up. Turn your toes forward, hands can come to your hips. Roll the shoulders back and recover with an open chest. Take some deeper breaths here, deeper inhalation, deeper exhalation. We'll go to the second side. Turn your right toes in slightly. Use your left hand to turn the whole left leg out. That's it, feel if the right thigh puffs forward, take the right thigh back, that's it. And with that thigh back, externally rotate the left leg now. So you're using your left hand to turn the inner thigh to the front of the thigh. Turn the front of the thigh to the outer thigh, that's it. And with that rotation, stretch the arms wide, inhale, exhale, and bend the front leg. That's it. And then exhale, bend to the side. Take your bottom hand to the brick, top hand to your hip. That's it. And now with the left hand down, roll the right shoulder back to open up the top side chest. Swing the top arm over your ear. That's it. Feel again if you're holding in the hip. Can you exhale, release in that front hip? That's it. Press your back foot, stretch your top arm, and pull yourself out of the pose. Turn your toes forward. Step or jump your feet together. That's it, roll the shoulders back, recover with an open chest. So our hands have kind of been super supportive <laughs> and, and really helping the legs figure out which way to go. We'll take side angle pose again, and if, and if the legs are still figuring this out, you can absolutely use your hands to help turn the leg, to help ground the thigh bone, moving that back thigh back. But if you're feeling like, oh, my legs kind of, they, they, they know what's going on now, we'll take the arms wide. So again, if you need the support of the hands, hands can stay at the tops of the thighs. If you wanna try out the legs on their own, we'll go that way. We can still, even with the arms wide, look at the front leg. So I'm seeing if that leg is, is, is not quite in alignment yet. So I'll turn, 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 as if my hand were there to do it. And then we'll bend, bend, and come into the pose. So let's do that. When you're ready, inhale, go wide apart. That's it, separate your feet wide, just like we did on the first side. So with the feet wide, turn your left toes in slightly, right leg out. That's it, and so look at your front leg. Even if you're not using your hands to help turn the leg, can you turn the top of the, left, the, top of the right thigh out and see that you've turned the leg enough there? That's it, and now with that rotation, inhale into the top chest, exhale and bend the front leg. That's it, exhale, bend to the side. There you go, bring that brick right against your front ankle and then roll the top shoulder back. That's it, as you roll the top shoulder, swing the top arm over your ear. That's it, press your front knee into your arm, 
And as that knee's pressing back into your arm, press your back foot, stretch the top arm. Awesome, everyone. And press your back foot, stretch your arm, pull yourself out of the pose. That's it. Turn your toes forward, hands, at your, hands on your hips a moment. So we just recover here. Roll the shoulders back. That's it. Recover with an open chest. Take some deeper breaths here. Deeper inhalation, deeper exhalation. Second side, now restretch your arms, unless the hands are still helping the legs. Turn your uh, right foot in slightly, left leg out. Rotate the left leg from inside to out. Can you feel if that back thigh is puffing forward? Can you move the back thigh back and turn the front leg further there? That's it. With that rotation, inhale into the top chest, exhale and bend the front leg. That's it, exhale, bend to the side. Left hand to your brick, top hand to your hip. Roll the top shoulder back to open up the top side chest. That's it. And as you roll that shoulder back, press your front knee into your arm. And feel as you're pressing the knee into your arm, that inner thigh will spread to the inner knee. Roll the top shoulder back and now swing the top arm over your ear. That's it. And now to come out of the pose, press your back foot, stretch your arm, inhale, come on up. There you go. Turn your toes forward, hands to your hips, roll the shoulders back, recover with an open chest. From here, fold forward. Take your hands to the floor if that feels okay. If this feels a little too tight, you can absolutely take your bricks in, on, under your hands. With the legs wide, press your thighs back and walk your hands forward. So you're using the arms now pulling forward to stretch the sides. But as the arms go forward, the legs are still pulling back. So there's this feeling of being pulled in two directions. That's it. And then walk your legs back, walk, sorry, walk your hands back. And then you can walk the feet in. When you can stand in your legs and, and it feels comfortable, take your hands to your hips, press your feet, come all the way up. That's it. And so now we'll take just a quick bridge pose. So you can lie down on your back, have your brick nearby. That's it, as you lie down on your back, bend your legs, Press your feet, lift your hips up, and take the brick underneath the center of your buttocks on any height that you need. So the brick can be on the lower height, the middle height, but you wanna see that the brick is just on the buttocks, not on the lower back. I would bring this up a little bit. Uh, uh, the brick up a little bit. Like there, that. yep, and that's it. Does that feel okay? Yes. Hold on to the sides of the mat here. Lift your shoulders and roll the upper arms down and in. That's it. Take some deeper breaths here. When you're ready, stretch one leg out. So your heel is on the floor, and you're sliding that foot and that leg away from you. As the leg pulls away from you, pull the sticky mat towards your feet, and with the deep inhalation, lift your chest away from your leg. That's it. So there's that again, stretch in two direction. That's now opening the front of the hip. And then bend that leg and stretch the other leg out. Extend the heel. So as your foot pulls the ankle, pulls the shin, pulls the knee and the thigh away from your chest, inhale, pull the sticky mat towards your feet and lift the chest away from the stretch in that leg. That's it. And then we'll do one more time like this. Bend that leg, stretch the first leg out again. Sophia, we are extending the heel. See, can you spread your toes and push the ball of your foot away from your knee? So the, that's it. As the ball of the foot moves away from the knee, feel there how the front of the ankle lengthens. That's it. And there's this feeling like your thigh is stretching down towards your foot. From there, pull the sticky mat towards your feet. Lift the chest away from that. So we're creating that space all along the frontal hip, frontal thigh. That's it, and then second time, bend that leg, stretch the other leg out. Extend the heel and the ball of the foot. So that's it, so feel as the ball of the foot gets longer, the ankle lengthens, the shin bone extends, the whole frontal thigh opens. That's it, as you pull the mat towards your feet, lift the chest away from the legs. That's it, and then bend your knees, press your feet, lift your hips up, take the brick out, let the back and the buttocks rest on the floor. From here now, you can hug your legs into your chest and we'll roll 
to the side. As you roll to your side, press your hands to lift yourself up. So we started with using our hands to help turn the legs. And we'll do the same thing in our seated poses. The tricky thing now is the legs are going to be absolutely passive. And they don't want to be because they're legs. <laughs> they're used to doing for us. They're used to carrying us around. So I'm going to take my hand to the back of the knee. And, and, and just watch first. I'm using my hand to just help relax my leg. So I'm starting to see, OK, can the leg just follow my hand? And then holding my knee, I'll just drag my foot in. So I'm keeping. And, and notice when we do this, the leg does this. <laughs> the leg will pick itself up. It's like that. You know, it's, it's, the legs are kind of like us in a way, where sometimes we can absolutely help someone no matter what. But to ask someone for help can be difficult. The leg has to learn how to ask for help. <laughs> so here, as I'm pacifying the leg, can just my hand hold the knee so that my foot comes in? Let's do, that's it. Let's do that a few times. Uh, so then you can take your hand to the other side. So you're holding the back of the knee. As many times as you need, you can roll the knee so that the leg is getting quiet. And then the hand is holding the knee, just the foot drags in. That's it. And then stretch that leg out. Let's do one more time each side. Hand holding the knee. We'll roll. And now can you keep the, the knee in place, the hand holding the knee? Drag the foot. That's it. And now feel if we're still holding. So can you exhale, relax the knee and the thigh? That's it. And then stretch that leg out. Second side, left hand, or is the other hand to the back of the knee. Let the leg get passive. Use your hand to hold the knee. Just drag the foot. That's it. And see then, can you let go the knee? So if you're struggling with this, it may be because you're doing it on the mat. So it's, it's helpful to uh, have your legs more on the floor because they will slide a little better on the floor. So if it feels like you still kind of got to pick up the leg, then you might scoot a little closer to the edge of the mat. Another thing here, in Iyengar yoga, we're all about lifting the sides, lifting the chest. But for what we're doing now, we kind of have to relax. So you might even slouch a little. <laughs> so watch this next part. My legs are a little closer together. I'm slouching a bit, so I'm just letting go. And in and that, and that way, the torso is being super supportive of the leg relaxing. <laughs> so here, I'll relax the leg again. And I'm using my hand to drag the foot. And here, I'll take my hand to my outer ankle. And with my hand on my outer ankle, the knee and the thigh will stay passive. I lift my foot up. Knee and the thigh passive. I'm just lifting the foot. And I'll use my hands now, the other hand at the top of my foot. I'm using my hands to roll. So I'm turning the shin to the floor. And as I'm turning the shin to the floor, notice what's happening in, the, in my thigh. What's happening in the thigh, it's externally rotating. Right, it's the same thing that we were working with in the lateral poses. So that space that we're creating in the, the joints is helping us here. And then I kind of sneak into it. So my leg is down. I'm looking this way. I'm just going to look this way. And I sneak my foot on my thigh. And then I can bring that other leg in. And, I just, and, and what we want to feel is just space in the ankle, the knee, the hip. So let's do that. So take your right hand to the back of the knee. The legs can be a little closer together, uh, maybe even a little closer. Sitting, sit at the edge of the mat so that your legs, I call it slideability, <laughs> so that you can slide. Take your right hand to the back of the knee, pacify the leg, let the leg relax. And now as you hold the knee, slide the foot in. That's it. And then relax the knee to the side. Take your right hand. Hold the outer ankle, so you're kind of scooping the outer ankle. That's it. And now can you keep the knee down? Just use your hand to pick the ankle up. So here I almost really have to slouch. Take your left hand to the top of the foot. That's it. And so I'm using my hand even to point my toes towards my straight leg. That's it. Now, using your hands, can you roll your shin? That's it, and the top of the foot to the floor. So as you roll the shin and the top of the foot to the floor, and you might do this a couple times. So you're, you're, and this is, we do this standing as well, you're turning 
the leg that way. That's it. Hold the, you can even hold your toes this way. And I'm using my hand to point my toes so that this frontal ankle lengthens. This is another part of opening the hips. The ankles have to be open as well. So then can you roll the shin? That's it. And now look to the right. As you look to the left, just slide your foot up. That's it. And now you might just see where you are. Can you bring the other foot back? That's it. If the knee is way up, then you can put a blanket. Uh, a blanket would be better or a pillow just to support that space between the knee and the foot. That's it. And then slide the bottom leg out. Bring the top leg up. Stretch that leg out. And we'll go to the second side. So left hand now to the back of the knee. Wiggle the leg a little. That's it. Can you use your hand to pull, hold the knee? Just slide the foot in. That's it. Relax the knee to the side. Take your left hand under, hold the outer ankle. As you hold the outer ankle, keep the knee down, lift the foot up. That's it. And then as you take your right hand, hold the top of the foot. But remember, we're using our hand to point the toes, the bent leg toes, towards the straight leg. So the front of the ankle is long. From here, just roll a little. So you're turning the foot to roll the center shin to the floor. And as you're looking at that leg, you can even see when, the, when we roll the bottom leg, that inner thigh and the, the inner thigh is starting to rotate towards the outer thigh like we did in the lateral poses. That's it. And now with that rotation, look to the left. And as you look to the right, sneak the foot up. That's it. So the knee will stay down, but the, it, this is the tricky part. It's not the whole leg lifting. Because if I lift the whole leg, then the knee is up. So the knee stays down, I just sneak the foot up, that's it. And then bring the other leg in. That's it, and so this is Ardha Padmasana, but coming in from this understanding of how we protect the joints and how we create space there so that these deeper seated hip opening poses are available to us. From here, stretch the bottom leg out, bring the top leg up, stretch that leg out. That's it, and then inhale, stretch the arms up. Exhale, and go forward. Just rest a moment here. That's it, and when you're ready, slowly roll yourself up. And we'll take Shavasana now here. You can lie down on your back, stretch your legs out, and let your whole body settle here. So the weight of the legs can rest and release downwards towards the floor. That's it, let the legs settle here. Let the head and neck release. Soften and relax the muscles on your face. Relax your jaw. Soften your brow. Relax around your temples. Just let go here. A lot of the work that we did today was active, not just physically, but mentally as well. Being so focused, so aware of all of the moving parts. See here as you rest, as the back of the head begins to rest and release into the support of the earth. Can you imagine and allow your brain to release back, down, and in? Just let go. Exhale, let your whole body release. Mm. 
and then slowly begin to bring awareness back to your breath. Bring your awareness back to the surface. Gently bend one arm, place your hand on your abdomen. Bend the other arm, place your hand on the abdomen. Gently bend one leg at a time and slowly roll to one side. You can use your arm to support your head. And then keeping your head and neck quiet, gently press your hands down to lift yourself up and make your way into a tall seat. Sit up tall. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today.